Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be doing a little tutorial on Twitch Spawn and how to set it up on a server. Um, so this is a dedicated server that we have set up and I'm going to assume that you have everything already in place. Uh, we're going to be using um, Ubuntu uh, 20.04 um, which is going to be dedicated. We're going to have screen installed and we're going to have java 8 already installed we can check that by typing out java version and it'll show that uh, java is already installed so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a directory so kdir make directory minecraft and then we're going to change into that directory and Basically, since Twitch Spawn uses Forge, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and download the latest version of Forge, or the latest version that you're going to be using. And in this case, we're going to use 1.16. So we're going to download the recommended version. So here we can type wgit and then the link that we just copied, but we're going to remove the add right before the link here. Now we can go ahead and hit enter. It's gonna download Forge. And then the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we wanna go ahead and launch Forge and we want to install the server portion of Forge. So we go ahead and type out the command here. We're gonna do java-jar and then the name of the file that we just downloaded. We have to make sure that we include the dash dash install server at the end if we don't include that you're gonna get an error okay because if you install this on a computer you'll know that it likes to give you a pop-up box that says install client install server so make sure you include the install server at the end and then go ahead and click on enter okay so this is gonna take a few minutes so we'll let it do its thing and we'll be right back Okay, so now that's finished, we can go ahead and remove the installer. So that's the first thing that you wanna do. Um, you could do an RM for remove, and then the name of the file with the installer.jar at the end. That will remove the installer, because you're not gonna need that anymore. What I like to do is I like to launch the game for the first time, for the first run, to let it download everything that it needs to, and make sure that it, it can run with no problem. So we're gonna do Java, and then XMS and so what we want to do here is uh, so on my server I have about four gigs of memory and so I want to set the first part of this command to be what I want the Java installation to run minimum and then up to a maximum okay so we'll do the XMS for the minimum of 1024 which is one gig and then we'll set the um, XMX as the maximum that we want to run. So in this case, 4,000, because we want to leave a little bit in there for the operating system and everything else to run properly. And then we'll type .jar, and then the name of the forge file, and then we'll let that run and do its thing. Now you'll notice that it just kind of stopped right here. What that means is we have to go in and accept the EULA. So what you wanna do is do vim eula.txt so that we can um, edit that file and change the condition from false to true, letting us know that we approve or we agree to the EULA. Once we've saved that file, we can rerun the command to launch Minecraft. Okay, now that everything has ran, we can stop the server. This will give the server a chance to then save all the files. Now if you take a look, you see that it's created all the files that we needed to run the server. First thing I would do is go into the server.properties and edit any of the information in here that you might for your own server. This would include the server message of the day. This would also include any other settings that you might wanna 
adjust, including whether or not it's a you know, friendly server, survival server, creative, things like that. Um, you can also set, like I said, the message of the day. Um, you can also set the seed, uh, if you want a specific seed or anything like that. These are the best things that you can do to get your server up and running in your own way. So go ahead and take a couple minutes to edit your server.config file and then we'll come right back. All right, now we, that we have all that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and download Twitch Spawn. So you can go ahead and visit the Twitch Spawn website uh, over on Curse Forge, and you can download the version of Twitch Spawn that you're gonna be using for your server. So in this case, we're gonna download the latest version of Twitch Spawn, which is the 1.16 for my, I'm sorry, for my 1.16 server. Now I have already downloaded the file and I've uploaded it to my Dropbox. So you'll wanna do the same thing. You'll wanna download the file and then you'll wanna find a way to upload it to your server, okay? So here we are at the website. We can click on download. This will allow us to download the file. Okay, like I mentioned, I have mine on my Dropbox. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy over my Dropbox location. Again, I'm gonna choose wgit dash capital zero, the name of the file, and then the location of my Dropbox as well. And then I'll click enter and this will download the Twitch spawn to, actually before we do that, let's change into the mods directory. So that way we can just download it directly into that folder. All right, so again, with that command, this will automatically download the Twitch spawn as you can see here. And then we'll go back up one directory and we will relaunch Minecraft again and we'll let it load with Twitch spawn and everything else. Now that we have everything loaded, we can stop the server and then we can go into the config file folder and you will see a Twitch spawn folder in here. And in the Twitch spawn folder is gonna have the files that you're gonna to need to edit in order to get things working on your server. The credentials file, I would suggest if you already have this set up on your local machine and everything is working, just copy over the credentials file that you have on your local computer to your server. It's the easiest way to get it done. Now that you have your credentials copied over, you can then copy over your rule set as well. So if you already have a rule set created locally, go into the rules, copy all the rules, and you can copy those into either the default or you can create your own rule set uh, if you've already have that done locally as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy my rules over here and I'm going to um, start the server after that. Now that we have all the rules copied over, let's go ahead and relaunch Minecraft. Let's go ahead and start the server up and let's see how things go. Now before we do that, let's actually put this in a screen session. So do screen dash capital S and name it Minecraft. Then let's go ahead and start the server here. That way we can exit out of the screen and do other things on the server if we needed to without disturbing the server. So let's launch the server and see what happens. All right, launching the server looks like I got an error and I'm not too sure on what exactly the error is. So I'm gonna do some research and I'll be right back. So it looks like there was an issue with my rules file. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my rules file and start with a default rules file. 
and then I was able to launch the server with no problem and I was able to log in. So if you're having that trouble, if you're getting that error, just go ahead and delete the rules file, start over fresh, and then just start editing the rules file on the server. I hope this video was able to help you out. If you did, please let me know and I'll see you next time.